on the news tonight. Buhari Wright Senate requests 800 million US dollars World Bank loan. Tinumbu jet out of Nigeria ahead swearing in. Senate Presidency, not central lawmakers, rejects APC consensus list. Tenth Assembly, Badabia Mila meets reps elects behind closed doors. 1.7 billion US dollar repatriated to Nigeria in quarter one 2023, CBN. And on sport, 2023 on the 17th Akron. Select right players for Burkina Faso clash. Now the news in detail. President Muhammad Buhari has sent a letter to the Senate seeking approval to take a loan to the tune of 800 million US dollar from the World Bank to cushion the effect of subsidy removal. This follows the federal government's April announcement of an 800 US dollar million World Bank grant targeting 50 million vulnerable Nigerians or 10 million households as part of its subsidy palliative measures. According to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, the disbursement of the grant is in light of the planned subsidy removal in June 2023. Ahmed underscored that engagements are ongoing with the newly established Presidential Transition Council, PTC, and the incoming administration to drive the palliative program, which includes the need for bosses among various considerations. In light of the World Bank loan trusts and requests a non-governmental organization, the civil advocacy, the executive director of CISLAC, Awal Musa Renaj, requiring the federal government over the loan request, adding that borrowing to fund post fuel subsidy removal palliatives is strange. He wondered if the fuel subsidy removal process has been suspended as announced by the Minister of Finance after the next meeting at the end of the April, then the government should return the borrowed money because what are we taking the loan for? The president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Wednesday left Nigeria for Europe on a working visit. This is coming two weeks after he returned to the country from a trip to London, Saudi Arabia and Paris. This was contained in a statement signed by his media aide Tunde Rahman. According to the statement, Tinubu will use the opportunity of the trip to fine-tune the transition plans and programs and his policy options with some of his key aides without unnecessary pressures and distractions. During the visit, the president-elect will engage with investors and other key allies with the goal of marketing investment opportunities in the country and its administration's readiness to enable a business-friendly climate through policies and regulations. Ashwa Jutinombu hopes to convince them of Nigeria's readiness to do business under its leadership through mutually benefited partnerships promised and premised on job creation and skills acquisitions. To politics. Senators elect across the North Central geopolitical zone from different political parties have rejected the zoning arrangement for the 10th National Assembly leadership positions announced by the All Progressive Congress on Monday. The APC had in the zoning plans endorsed Godswill Akwabio from the South South geopolitical zone as the president of the 10th Senate, while Barao Jibrin from the Northwest was picked as his deputy. Also in the House of Representatives, the APC endorsed Tajuddin Abbas from the Northwest as a speaker and Benjamin Kalu from the Southeast as deputy speaker. The development forced the North Central Senators elect to write an open letter to the national chairman of the APC, Abdullahi Adamu, and rejected the zoning arrangement because it excluded the region. Specifically, the elected federal lawmakers said only the North Central geopolitical zone did not produce any presiding officer, although neither the president-elect nor the vice-president-elect. The letter by the lawmakers-elect was titled Resolution of the North Central Caucus of the 10th Senate as NAS Leadership Zoning. And to the next story, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Badabia Mila, has met with the members-elect for the 10th Assembly behind closed doors. The meeting, which had in attendance returning and new lawmakers 
was held at the Transco Hilton Hotel in Abuja. It was gathered that the meeting was organized by the Joint Task, a coalition of eight political parties, including the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC. Although details of the closed-door meeting were undisclosed, it may not be unconnected to part of moves towards persuading the lawmakers to support the party's choice. Speaking before the session, Ben Lo Kumo, chairperson of the Joint Tax, said the coalition aims to ensure that there is stability in the 10th Assembly. This is coming amid opposition to the nomination of Tajuddin Abbas for the speakership's position by the APC. Recall that the ruling party picked Abbas and Benjamin Kalu for the position of speaker and deputy. However, the party's decision that has been met with rejection by some aspirants in the race. Speaking on the development at the speakership declaration of Mukhtar Betara, on Monday, the deputy speaker Idris Wase, who is also in the race, said they will reject any attempt to hijack the parliament. Going on to the next story. The Central Bank of Nigeria said 1.7 billion US dollar was repatriated to Nigeria's economy in the fourth quarter year of 2023. The governor of CBN, Godwin Emefiele, on Tuesday disclosed these at Lagos Tech by annual non oil export summit. Also, Emefiele stated that 970 million US dollar was sold into the investors and exporters window. He noted that its program has continued to positively impact Nigeria's economy. He added that shipping firms with undocumented cargoes from the country would be penalized. On February 10, 2022, CBN established the RT200FX initiative to stimulate non oil exports with a 200 billion US dollar. FX income target in the next three to five years. Going to Far East, some youth welding guns and other dangerous weapons tried to disrupt economic activities in Onitsha, Anambra State on Wednesday. A South said the youth suspected to be members of the outlaw indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, bought a commercial boss in Onitsha, claiming to be enforcing a city term directive. They also bought a tricycle while shooting in the air. A message at last weekend been circulated on social media stating that there will be a four-day citizen exercise in the southeast beginning from Monday, May 8th to 11th. No reason was given for the order, but a press release by the spokesperson of IPOP, Emma Powerful, stated that a group had announced May 30th as a day for all Biafrans to sit at home in commemoration of Biafra Day. The burning of vehicles, it was gathered, had sent panic through Onisha town, with a source saying that the enforcers were heading towards Abagana in Njokota, local government area, through the old road. But the state police command spokesperson, DSP, Tochuku Ikenga, who confirmed the incident, said police operatives confronted the enforcers and they had long been dislodged. Going to Abuja. An explosion has rocked the Nigeria Air Force now fuel storage facility located at its Abuja base, causing panic in the area. The now base is located close to the Inam de Azikwe International Airport in Abuja. The level of damage at the facility could not be ascertained at the time of filing this report, so also the cause of the explosion. A source who witnessed the incident said there was no casualty recorded. The now Director of Public Relations and Information, DOPRI, Air Commodore Ayodele Famuiwa confirmed the incident, but he said he has no information yet to provide for the details. From Abuja story to Kaduna, suspected Fulani militias on Tuesday attack Runji village in Atiyap Chipdam of Zandokata, local government area of Kaduna state, killing a member of the village identified as Danladi Duduk. A community leader in Runji, Konia Ben, confirmed the story that the first attack carried out in the afternoon resulted in the murder of the victim, whose residence was close to the Anglican church in the community. Information recalled that the same Runji village was attacked three weeks ago by suspected Fulani militias that killed at least 33 people and destroyed 40 houses. Information learned that the assailant came through the cover of Ed of cattle some few minutes after 2 p.m., and started firing shots using sophisticated guns 
including a revolver machine gun, which scared away all people in the community. The attack, the attack took only a few minutes after which the assailant rushed back in the direction of Zango Urban, using cows as a cover-up and ran away. Going to foreign story within Africa, Tunisia. A Tunisian police officer shot dead four people at Africa's oldest synagogue in an attack Tuesday that sparked panic during an annual Jewish pilgrims on the island of Jebba. It gone down through visitors, including a French citizen and two fellow officers, before he was shot dead himself, the Interior Ministry said. Another four visitors and five police officers were wounded in the attack. He forced the first on foreign visitor in Tunisia since 2015 and the first on the pilgrim on the Gibra or synagogue since a suicide truck bombing killed 21 people in 2022. I beg your pardon, 2002. The Tunisian Foreign Ministry identified the two visitors killed as a 30 year old old Tunisian and a French national, age 42. He did not release their names. The assailant had first shot dead a colleague and taken his ammunition before opening fire at the synagogue, sparking panic among hundreds of visitors there. Investigations are continuing in order to shed lights on the motive of this cowardly aggression, the Interior Ministry said, refraining from referring to the shooting as a terrorist attack. Former Nigerian goalkeeper Andrew Aikomogwe has won the Golden Eaglet coach Unduka Ubade not to gamble with a selection of players that will face Burkina Faso in the ongoing 2023 on the 17th Africa Cup of Nations. Recall that Nigeria will battle Burkina Faso on Thursday in the quarterfinals of the tournament. The winner of the game will qualify for the semi finals of the competition and also 2023 on the 17th FIFA World Cup. The Golden Eaglets have shown they are a good side in this tournament, and I really feel happy that they bounce back to winning ways immediately after losing to Morocco in the second group game of the game. At this point, where every mistake will be punished, I would advise Ubadi to ensure he does not gamble with his selection against Burkina Faso. The team is good, and I'm optimistic Nigeria will overcome Burkina Faso at the end of the clash. That sports story ends the World News this hour from BGI TV Current. Before we go, some major headlines. Fuel subsidy. Buhari Wright Senate request 800 million US dollar World Bank loan. Tinubu jets out of Nigeria ahead swearing in. Senate presidency. Not central lawmakers reject APC consensus lists. 10th Assembly, Bajabia Miller meets reps elect behind closed doors. And lastly, on sport, selects right players for Burkina Faso Clash. For more updates of our programs and broadcasts on YouTube, our handle is BGI TV Current. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Bagide Imo with Alawi Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. For Advert placement of the goods and services, coverage of events and functions. Please dial the phone number streaming on your screen. Thank you for watching. I am Moriri Rabila Lawal. Good evening.